And we're back. As I returned from the fifth flight, a guy came over to us. I groan as I open the canopy. Oh, it's so hot. It's like if you want to fly in this season, water is indispensable. Yeah, my body's used to being in the cockpit now. Aoi-kun speaks in a way that is hard to interpret whether she's pleased or if she's sulking. It would appear that she still has a complex about her clumsiness. I'm feeling quite worn out, I'm gonna take a little break. Getting back on the ground, my legs are a little unsteady. Rather than actually being tired, being in the air for so long has messed up my sense of balance. That conversation topic, then Kotori says. Hamane looked at me. No, I can't let her ride it with me. You're the one that has the license, Hamane. That might be true for just normal flying, but there's no guarantee that there won't be any problems. If something happens, I won't be able to deal with it. Okay, I respond instinctively, and Amane seems a little hurt. However, when I was sitting in the back seat watching Amane at the controls, I certainly did feel quite nervous. Could I swallow as she nods? Wheelchair completely throws her arms into the air. Sure. Okay, and I pick up Kotli and put her in the back seat. What's up, Amelie? てくれないと思うと不安で。ああ、気持ちはわかりますけど、後ろの人がもっと不安になるんで。平気よ。もう The winch isn't moving at all. What's the problem? Okay, he's waving in this direction. The next moment. Puff. Black smoke was coming from the winch. I'll be back just in case. Please release the tow rope for now. I checked that out when I had released the tow rope and run over to the winch. What's up? What did you do? Looking at the black smoke rising up like a signal beacon, I get called out completely at a loss of what to do. It was working fine until she started using it. I'm gonna sound like she was in complete despair and she looked at the inside of the winch, which was covered in oil. who really wanted to fly was downheartened. Looked like one of the parts in the dilapidated old machine is broken and we could no longer use it. Hamane nods as if to say you're right. Uh, can this be fixed? Anchan. Anchan, come help. For a start, even getting someone to come and get such a bulky machine would be a tough job. A tough job in itself. To tell the truth, I'm more worried about the cost than the time it'll take. 
日のテストはここまでだゴー Sitting there, wheelchair coach, he goes white with shock. Something went wrong with that. I thought I was sure something would go wrong with the、uh, glider itself. <laughs> and Chan got one of his contacts to repair the broken winch. Yep, just what I said. It's an old model, and there was, still, and there was rattling with some other,、oh, other parts, so he said the repairs will take at least a week. We were so busy until yesterday, now suddenly we have nothing to do. We're all. <sighs> completely devastated. It's not like there's nothing for us to do. I head back to the simulator before I forget the feeling of flying, and as always, Amine goes back to the drawing board. Go to the open a book she borrowed from the library to check something. <laughs> That's gonna melt in like half a second. A g e a who had lost our game of rock, paper, scissors, had come back from buying ice cream. She gives out the ice cream to everyone. At some point, the test flight had become our objective, but that was really just a milestone. To go above the clouds is our true objective. We also need to do that this summer. After she finished giving out the ice cream, she dug in. To her own and slumped down the chair. There's nothing we can do about it right now. We can't fly without the winch. I feel that the simulator isn't really enough. Why don't you do your homework or something while you have the chance? Nerd. Wow, that was quick. When did she have enough spare time to do that? Let's go to the beach for the mandatory beach scene in every anime thing ever. It's because we've been in the garage the whole time. If I had to say, the only kind of summer activity we did was eating that watermelon. I'm psychic. Where can we go? Everyone's gonna be at the pool on the beach, and they'll, be all, they'll, be, they'll all be jam packed. She must have seen that on the way back from the store and felt that she wanted to do it. Oh, you mean that place? As soon as she said that, I knew where she went. Meant... Standing up quickly, she turns around to look at how many could we? Yeah, why can't you swim, Kotori? Why? Oh. I'll go, go buy one real quick. And that's why being pushed into it by Geha. It was hurriedly decided that we would be going swimming this afternoon. There's nothing wrong with that, I guess. It is a summer holiday after all, so we're not so lazy that we'd will willingly let it go to waste. In the afternoon, we stopped off at the dormitory. This place is closer to where we want to go. Okay, guys, you got everything? Alright, let's go. Feeling like I was leaving the outing, I took everyone with me as we left the dormitory. Our destination was. A beach, like I said. Is she in her, like, sleeping wear? That looks like her sleep wear. Really? A place that this nice? I don't think it would really matter if it's off the beaten path. People would definitely come here. Look at that, it's nice. This was no beach resort, it was the shore of a lake. There was sand beneath our feet, the water was nice, we could swim there, and like Agea said, being off the beaten path meant that most people didn't know about it. It's surrounded by forest and cliffs, so it can't be seen from the surrounding area. <laughs> the 
sea in the water, hat flaps his wings happily. This is our secret place where we come to play. Looking at the water made her get excited, just like Hat. Instead of Gaia, she pushed Kotori's wheelchair along through the sand. Because of the sand, if she didn't do that, Kotori wouldn't be able to go forward. I feel like even pushing that would be really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. You've always got such a big mouth. She yelled she threw Hat back to where he was before. Oh, yeah, I'll get changed too. When I say I get changed, all I mean is that I'm taking my clothes off. I'm already wearing my swimming shorts. Now it looks like he really wants to go swimming. Tell that once in a while he'd like to swim in a big wide open place like this, so I brought him along and it seems like he's enjoying it. Just hold on a bit longer, everyone will be back soon. <laughs> Played with Hat for a while and the girls came back from the shadows of Hala, wearing the new swimsuits that they had just bought. Nice focus. Then she doesn't say anything. I like the bottom part of this one. Ugh. You really are girls after all. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Usually you don't seem all that feminine, that's all. You make these kinds of terrible comments, but I can't help it if it's true. I spent basically all day every day with them, so I didn't really make the distinction between boys and girls. But... Uh... I really do seem a lot more feminine, or rather I'm being made to notice. I usually don't notice, but this just reminded me of how cute they are. So this must be why all the boys in the class envy me. No, wait, that's... Gaya surprised me with a really direct question. <laughs> All of them are aware of where I'm looking and seem to be making poses. Looks like I won't be able to bluff my way out of this one. Oh, I can't choose Amine yet. Neither of them. I assume that those will just be unlocked at a later date. Like, I'd probably have to beat the game, and then I, it'll unlock the other route, so I'm gonna save this one. Um, not on page 10. Uh, well, there's actually no choices through a lot of these, so I'm just gonna... Where is the first choice I made? The first choice was on page 2, so I'm just gonna start overriding these, because I have no need for them. So that's the first main choice. I'm just gonna go with the Geha. I would choose Amine, because I like that bottom part. Actually, I just like her whole one. But I'll go with a Geha, because I still don't like Kotui. I really don't. Maybe a Geha? Huh? I've never praised something like that before. I don't know anything about that. No, it really suits you, Amane. I don't know, because we're childhood friends. <laughs> the no holds barred question time ended without incident, so now it's time to go swimming. After finishing my warm up, I started on inflating the rubber ring. <laughs> What are, we, what are we just gonna push your chair into the water? No way, it'd be a big problem for me if you drown. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll be glad that we've got a rubber ring from the start of your from the bottom of your heart. As I speak quietly but with a hidden meaning, she gives me a suspicious look. Alright, finished. Put the inflated rubber ring over Kuzumi's head. Hold on tight, don't let go. 
じゃあ行きますか Can I lift it up completely together? Even though the water is close by, we head in a completely different direction. Are you gonna throw her off the cliff? Then we climbed on top of the big rock at the bottom of the cliff. By now, it seems like Kotomi just realized what we have in store for her. Don't worry, it's really deep down there. She can't swim, you know. If she slips out of her tube, then like, there's gonna be a problem. Big grins on our faces, we swing Kotomi's body like a pendulum. Here we go. One, two. As we throw Kotomi with all her strength, she flies through the air in a beautiful upward curve. Splash. Water sprays out like a torpedo had exploded. Yep, she flew pretty nicely. From out of the ripples in the water, Kotori emerged, still holding tightly to a rubber ring. Hey, you okay? Kotori waved both hands like she was calling for an encore. Next is a jump of S difficulty, a triple aerial twisted twist moon salt. As we get down from the rock and go get Kotoi. There was Amane waiting with a sparkle in her eyes. Are we gonna throw you? Huh, you wanna do it too? There's no way we could refuse when she has such an expectant look in her eyes. I would be scared to be up there. There's nothing we can do about that, so okay, and I lift up on it. The reason why she's heavier than Kotli must because of her boobs, thank you. I mean, she's pretty much meatier and taller than Kotli. She's just, like, overall larger than Kotli. Get out of the way, it's dangerous there. Two, three. Ah! Amane flew through the air. Her trajectory is a little lower than Kotomi's. This time the splash was like a splash was like a direct hit from a torpedo. Ah! Quack, quack. Kotomi and Hat let out noises of the splashing water hits. Amane, you, you alright? Okay. Amane is sinking. Uh, Amane. Starts desperately paddling towards her, and as she thrusts her hand into the water, Amane's face appears from the water. Then she clings onto Kotoli's rubber ring. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be right there. I jump in and go to rescue them both. So, can she not swim? Oh. You can't swim, so why did you want to do it? How? I don't think it would help with that. Okay, okay. You can't do it. This is a game that we often used to play. You're quite ruthless back then. Masatsugu would be close to tears too. Remember, this is one of those rites of passage, and this is what helps kids grow up. Maybe. When we started do we started things off all of a sudden in a kind of childish way, but we were enjoying summer activities in our own way. Recently, I haven't really been all that active, so I was just swimming around the place. Kotoli entrusted herself to the rubber ring floating in the water with Hadbro alongside her while again and Amane were building sandcastles. Those two really do like making things. <laughs> Kotoli mum murmured with half her body floating in the water. She's 
She's always in her wheelchair, so even moving a short distance can be quite troublesome in the water. Even her disabled legs don't feel so heavy. Ned is happy at being able to swim around as much as he likes. I passed by the two of them as I returned from my long distance swim, and then got out of the water and sprawled out on top of the sand. Sprawled out on top of the sand? Oh my god, my back would just burn, so... Oh, that would be terrible. Oh, sure, I'm worn out after that. Uh, it's been a while since I did any exercise. I feel like I've lost some stamina. Remember to get ahead she looked at my thighs? Hmm? No, that's because I used to cycle. And she says that I can't help but look at Cody's waist. Really is slim. It's hard to tell because she's always in her wheelchair because he has a slender body. Compared to her, I guess. I was thinking how uh, full bodied you are. Because he spoke in a serious tone to him. Both girls started staring at us. Both girls stared straight at Amane, who was relaxing in the shade of a tree. She was in the water just now, so her wet swimsuit was clinging tightly to her body, which emphasized her curves. <laughs> oh, she took off the towel part. She let us have the ideal curvaceous body. She's a top tier waifu. And when he looks at her body, slightly bewildered, she puts her hands on her voluptuous breast and lifts them up. Mm. Hmm. I know because we've been living together for a few days, but Amine doesn't seem to do anything to maintain her figure. Because and Nagea don't really worry that much about it, and in Amine's case, she doesn't seem to be worried about it in the slightest. In other words, she's a natural beauty. Can't be helped if they say it's unfair. That came completely out of the blue. Me. I do what she says and stand up. Oh, do I have all the curves? Can you stop looking at me like that? It's kind of embarrassing. You say that to me, but if I stared at you, you'd get angry, wouldn't you? Oh. Uh, so it's okay because they're girls then. Say it like that. Go to Kotli as she beckons me over. Uh, sure, but don't touch any weird places. Kotli pokes my arm muscles with her fingertip. I do as she tells me. Please. Everyone seems intrigued as they poke my muscles. It tickles. She says she points at my chest. Hey, if I touch your chest, you'd go totally nuts. Yeah, but you shouldn't say it like... Oh, it's difficult when Amine says it too. It can't be avoided, so I tense up my pecs. Alright. I'm gonna check the difference by alternating between touching my chest and her own. What is going on? This is so embarrassing. But I am just a tad happy about it. Guy being happy about having his muscles praised is like a girl being... <coughs> Please about having your figure praised. The 
This part is even better. I say as I kind of get carried away and tense up my legs. <laughs> How do you like my well-trained thighs? でもなんかちょっと気持ち悪いね。うん。ここまで来るとちょっとね。このまま持って殴れば狂気になりそうだな。どうしたの、青井くん？It's uh, nothing. I'm just going to go for another swim. Three girls stare, stare blankly at me as I trudge towards the water. どうしたんだろう、急に。さあ、男の子はナイーブだから。I float on the surface of the water along with Hat who had followed me and seemed to soothe my wounded heart. We played at the lake until sunset, then went back to the dormitory. And then he seemed, seemed satisfied as she speaks to Hat. I was worried that swimming in the lake might not really appeal to Amane, so I'm really glad she enjoyed it. While having a lively chat, we go through the gate and see someone at the entrance. Oh no. It was Hibari. Goodly groans she looks at the call history on her cell phone. She had an unbelievable amount of missed calls from Hibari. Oh, sorry, I went to swim at the lake with everyone. He really seemed puzzled as she looked, looked at Kotori. Looks like Kotori's going, Kotori going swimming was completely unexpected. I didn't think that Hibari was coming today. It's always quite sudden, but usually either I or Kanako are in the dormitory. However, since yesterday, Kanako has been back at her house. Everyone is now on their Obon holiday. I unlocked the entranceway door. Please come on in. Well, you didn't even do anything. She said, then looked back at Kotori. You already told me that. Yes, I'm keeping an eye on her, so please feel safe in your knowledge that everything's alright on your way home. What do you mean keeping an eye? Keep an eye yeah, keeping an eye on me, grumbled quickly. Ah, she takes out a great big styrofoam box and opens the lid inside it. It's the second time for Akeha and Amane to meet Hibari. Since we started camping, Hibari has been to the dormitory a few times. After I'm done with this part, I'm gonna go see ya. Paper airplane barbecue. What the heck does that mean? Okay, but after this, I'm gonna go check and see if some of the routes are locked until you beat the game, which would be weird, but I mean, I, I guess it would increase replay value. Again, I declared the opening in a loud voice. 
It's a competition, as the name suggests. It's an anything goes contest where we all make a paper airplane, and the person whose plane flies the furthest gets to eat the best meat. I thought you were making a plane out of the meat. The reason why we are doing this is because the meat that he believed brought over varies in type and size. There's beef, pork, and chicken, as well as the various cuts of meat, and if we were to divide it evenly amongst everyone, there would only be a small amount of each meat for each person. Beef, I want to eat a belly full of loin and ribs is what these media and girls all insisted, so that's why the very first competition of this type has been hastily arranged. The discipline chosen for the paper is the paper airplane, which embodies the peaceful spirit of the Soren Club. <laughs> Everyone starts work on folding their paper airplanes. We aren't using the construction kits like the ones that Koto used before in the garage. These are just the regular paper planes made from a single piece of paper. We come up with uh, our own ways of folding them, and the paper airplanes that we make are all different shapes. Everybody's serious about this. The meat and our pride are on the line. Have you finished? Okay. I'll bring the paper airplanes that we have made and stand next to each other in a line. I'll throw them at the same time when the signal is given. There will be no complaining about the results. When aren't you? Alright, get ready. Hold my good. Okay, I thought that was a short skirt. Those are just short shorts. Not much better, but. Everybody has a serious look on their face. But bang. We all throw our paper airplanes at the same time. The four paper airplanes cut through the darkness of the night. This looks bad. The first one to fall was ominous. It wobbled ungracefully as it flew, then suddenly lost speed and crashed to the ground. The next paper airplane to fall was mine. Cody and Agea. Gaz yeah, were the only ones left, so it was now a two horse race. Amane and I, who were now spectators, watched over the battle with nervous anticipation. Their two paper airplanes, with a feeling of being almost completely weightless, flew right across the garden. Could paper airplanes really fly this far, is what I thought as I watched on and pressed. It was a close finish. <laughs> Yeah, protest. While getting closer to the ground, both of their planes were still increasing their flight distance. However, just as they were grazing the ground, a Gaia's plane got caught in the shrubbery. It felt like a Gaia would have won if there were no obstructions, though. <laughs> well, she's got a point. That's alright, isn't it? The second place person still gets to eat the beat. That's <laughs> And he looks down at her own plane, dejected. Sizzle. Fat from the meat is flying off the hot plate. Oh, and he slowly eats her chicken while continuing to act all downhearted. You know, things like that can happen, you know. Four paper airplanes from now are lined up next to the hot plate. The one I made was just a mediocre regular type. Cuddly Zed worked on the tips of hers a little, and the back rear wings were bent slightly, probably giving it more lift. The gaze was folded somewhat more elaborately than Cuddly's. And there was Amade's. I couldn't possibly imagine how she folded it, but it was a pretty complicated shape. <laughs> Amane puts her hands to her chest and hangs her head. It would appear that the reason why she lost is not because of there was a problem with the design, but rather her clumsiness when it came to making it. Like his plane seems like it would be able to fly well. But his plane was well devised and was also precisely folded. <laughs> She looks on with envy at the beef loin and ribs that Kazuya Nagaya are eating. 
こっちのローズも最高ザ焼き肉って感じよね I won't eat the beef too, but to be honest, anything is okay. Pork and chicken were really tasty. We had our dinner while chatting excitedly. On the TV that had been left in the dining hall for some reason, a program called Japan Rocks the World had just started. It's a program that covers Japanese people who are active in various fields. Amane senpai mo, shoulai kono bangumi ni deru kamo shiremasen ne. Amane chan, telebi ni dashite daizoubu ka shira. Kito hen na hatsugen suru wa yo. Sore ga ii janai no? Senpai bijin da shi. As they sit there saying these things right in front of her, they turn their focus back to the TV. A middle-aged man with a beard and white coat appears. They're called hyper nerds. I've seen this guy several times on TV. He developed the technology that he had just mentioned and has uh, and has been applied to things that we are normally that we are familiar with in our daily lives. He is pretty odd and eccentric weirdo is what we put it. However, at the same time he is famous for his outspoken remarks and can sum up sum, sum up things like environmental issues with a simple statement, so he is quite thr thrilling to watch. <laughs> Oh, Amane, who had been focused on eating, mumbled as she lifted her head. Everyone looks back at the TV again. There on the screen it said Mochizuki Takashi, inventor. Speaking of which, I have a feeling she said her dad was an inventor. So that man is Amane's dad. Oh, so that's I don't think it matters much. It doesn't matter who your parents are, it all depends on who you are. Is that weird? I'm not sure you'd call him what you call it. He's really famous. Bewildered, everyone looks at the TV, then compares what they see to Amane biting into her fatty pork, and then look looks up and happily says, Oh. <laughs> Well, that explains why she had all that money to uh, buy those parts online without even thinking. Behind Mochizuki Sensei, who was being interviewed, was a glimpse of a girl in a white coat. Like she's talking about things that happen to someone else while stuffing herself with pork, and she says, Oh, again. I recognize the invention that Takashi is proudly introducing. It was a hot topic for a while, it sold really well and was on the morning news. She explains it like it's completely normal, but. Recently, I've been around her all the time, so I just thought. You know, so I just thought of as a. Wait, what? I've been around her all the time, so I just thought of as a strange girl. What? That she's really an incredible person. Okay, that was a weird sentence. I go a little pale when I think about whether or not it's alright to throw someone like that off the top of a rock. Once again on the screen, there was oil. Once again on the screen, there was Amine holding, oh, holding, helping her father. She's good looking, so she looks great on TV. However, the others were no longer making a fuss about it. It all seemed strangely real. Now they were, now they were confronted with what Amane would look like after she quits. Cuddly put a piece of grilled beef ribs on Amane's little dish. I gave her some beef loin. Since it's 
the topic of her leaving school had come up, there was a feeling of sadness at the dinner table. Drink break. Groans as she turns the pages of the book, which are which is all written in English. Which which is uh, okay. Yeah, I get it. Which is all written in English. Okay. Do you understand it? Please say things in English. I like it when Japanese people do that. Kari is reading a foreign book about morning glory and other similar phenomena. There are a few records of such things occurring in Kazagawa, so it looks like she came across this while looking for something similar. It would be great if there were some articles about phenomena that have happened in, that have occurred in Kazagawa. Seems that when it happened 26 years ago, it was very sudden and was shown on TV and in newspapers as a rare phenomenon. If the photo that the Soaring Club had taken had been circulated, then the reaction to it would have been quite different. We didn't have the internet like we have now, so we've only been able to find articles and records from the time in the library. But we only know a little about this phenomenon. So Katali, she showed me the maps that she had made herself. <clears throat> this size is drawn based on eyewitness testimonies. It was pretty long, it went diagonally across the lake and then just kept going and going. How long does it last? さあ、せいせい2、3時間ってところじゃないかしら。雲の周りに強い上昇気流があって、それに乗れば、グライダーで渡っていくこともできるそうよ。OB の人たちはそうやって撮影したんでしょうね。I see. When the water vapor comes a vertical draft and rises up in the sky, the colder air cools it down, creating clouds. There's a strong connection between clouds and vertical draft. Well, instead of a few decades, it's been a few decades, hasn't it? There are only ten days left of the summer holiday. The countdown to Amine quitting the school has begun. Before then, we have to pass through the passage of clouds. No matter how good a glider we make, or whether we learn to pilot it perfectly, if the morning glory doesn't occur, we can't do anything. <sighs> yeah, who is working on something by herself, wipes the sweat from her brow and takes a breather. What have you been doing? We already have one. She had attached pedals and a stick that was like a yoke to a chair. Calling it a cockpit is slightly lame, though. What is that face? Okay, I took a cable that extends from her poor excuse for a mock cockpit and plugged it into the computer. Cuddly, who seems intrigued, leans over. Are you actually getting us a flight stick? Oh my goodness, you're actually making me something useful. I turn it on, and she says. Okay, sits down the mock cockpit, co co the cockpit and operates the yoke. Then... Could it be? Wow, something useful. Now we can actually train. Operating the pedals and the yoke attached to the chair moves the aircraft shown in the monitor. Felt like magic. It moves out of the way and I sit down and try it. Oh, this is great. It really moves. この。Okay, calls out to her and Amane, who is sitting in front of the drawing board, lifts her head up. Amane comes over and takes a good look at the cockpit that Age had made. Yeah, 
Go ahead, Amane. Do it, do it. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, muttering, I should have made it like this from the beginning. She operates the simulator for a while. Winch is going to come back to the house. I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. Why is Coach Lee the only one who is happiest about this? With the winch broken, club activities were ground to a halt. We couldn't just stand around waiting for time to pass. That's why everyone's been looking for something to do. Feeling that we're making even the slightest progress lifted everyone's spirits. Nominee is trembling. それにもなれることができて一石二鳥じゃない。I step back a little to allow Amina into her seat while listening to them all talking. I happen to take a glance at the drawing board. When she has spare time, Amina is always at the drawing board. Some plans have been drawn here, but the aircraft has already been completed. Even so, I wondered what it was she had been drawing. It's a glider. The shape of the wings is different. The main wings were a bit further forward in relation to the fuselage. The outline was strange and quite different to the airplanes I know. That looks very weird. I'm not sure. I well that would so work. I'm not sure how that kind of design would work, because like it doesn't have a rudder or elevators. It just like fuses them into one, which is I don't know if that would work well. <laughs> Hey asshole! As I noticed his voice coming out of the blue, I realized that at some point Toby Oka had come into the garage. Everyone stops talking and starts acting warily of him. 何かと思えばゲームで遊んでるのか。それがソーリング部の活動なのか。Seeing Toby Oka appear suddenly and making snide comments, Kotori looks like she's about to snap at him. ダメだよ、Kotori。分かってるわよ。何かご用ですか？ Yamanobe Sensei が放任しているようなのでな。代わりに私が見に来てやったんだ。Yamanobe Sensei is our advisor, but he hardly ever shows his face here. That could be because of the pressure from Tobioka. If he were to be actively involved with the club, he would become a target for Mr. Tobioka. Himeki, こんなお遊びのためにロボット部を辞めたのか。お前には期待していたんだぞ。お遊びじゃありません。Garrett looks sharply without any fear of Tobioka. He frowns in frustration. こんな部を選んだこと、いずれ後悔するぞ。そうならないよう努力します。Really, she looks like she wants to say, "I don't need your opinion, so get out of here." Yeah. Seems like she's putting up with it for now. もちづき、また飛んだらしいな。はい、テストフライトをしました。ちゃんと活動しないと生徒会に怒られるので。その時ウインチが故障したらしいじゃないか。なんでそんなこと知ってんのよ。あれじゃない。山野部先生には報告したから。As a safety precaution, we tell Mr. Yamanobe everything that we'll be doing. また事故を起こすつもりか。もし怪我人を出したら、今度こそ廃部だぞ。と言ってもどの道あと10日か。夏休みが終わればお前も引退なんだ。頼むからそれまではおとなしくしておいてくれ。We left it at that and Tobioka left the garage. なんなのあいつ？超ムカつくんですけど。We should assassinate him. 本当に嫌味なおっさんよね。ロボット部やめて正解だったわ。ね、アマネちゃん、さっきあいつが言ってた事故ってアマネちゃん。ああ、分かってる。事故はないようにしなきゃな。いや、そうじゃなくて、お腹が空いた。ご飯を食べてこよう。Omni pulls an unnatural smile and stands up and leaves the garage. 何あれ。さあ。ね、事故ってなんだろう。わからない。けど。Ishka died in the plane accident. Yeah, that's gonna be it. It looks, it looks like Tom and I had something in the past she doesn't want to talk about. As I say that, the other two have a grave look on their faces.
I don't think anyone would be trying so hard for some Iska if she was still alive. So I'm assuming that she's dead and that was her wish, so that's what they want to do in memory. Nighttime. I get out of the bath and it's about time to go to bed. I mean, I didn't see myself today. Even at dinner time, she didn't eat much. Ever since Tobioka mentioned an accident, what happened? Everyone was worried about it, but it didn't seem like we could ask her about it. I walk along the hallway while thinking of that, and then Amine came down from the second floor. Eh, she's in her room, I think. Amine knocks on Kotori's door. Kotori pokes her head out from her room and is surprised to see Amine there. This is probably the first time she's gotten to see her in her room, in her room like this. Cuddly invited her in, and Amane went inside the room. Cuddly went to close the door, then noticed I was there. She looked at me like, what should I do? Come over here. But there's no way I could go in there. Eventually, she closed the door. ここは昔、イスカの部屋だったんだ。な、あと。かあ。あの頃、何度か遊びに来たことがあった。鳩用の出入り口を作るのも手伝ったぞ。そうだったんだ。通りで雑なわけね。あまり変わってないな。私 物が少ないから、ごちゃごちゃしてると動くのに邪魔になるし、部屋を見に来たの？あ、そうだった。借りていたこれを返そうと思って。これ、イスカの高校日誌じゃない。返すってどういうこと？それは小鳥のものだろ
I have not done it in so long. I thought it was shift. Oh no, isn't it shift tab? Yeah, it's shift tab. Oops. Zero guides available. Um, oh yeah, you can't see the overlay, can you? No, you can't. Well, I'm going to dig around here a little bit. Is there nothing? Okay, yeah, go on. <laughs> Walkthroughs. I'm just going to do this here, so I don't put a description. Installation patch and game walkthrough. I saw that one. Could this be bigger, please? Thank you. Could it be bigger up here, too? Thank you. Alrighty. Shrooms. Omni route. Totally route cleared needed. Alright, well. So, yeah, I guess a few of them are going to be locked until you complete the game a couple times with the other characters. That's pretty interesting. I plan to go through with every character anyway, so. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to go back to the main menu, and then I'm gonna have to return to title screen, yeah, yeah. Here, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do to get back to the place, because I've actually had to do this before. I have to load it up, and I have to choose the choice, and then I just hold control for a while. Actually, no, I need a CG, too. I need a CG. Wait, I got it. I got it. Hold on. I got it. I got it. I know what I'm gonna do. Wait. Yeah, yeah. It was after this, wasn't it? Where was it? Where was it? Where's the thing? Almost there. There we go. And... Screenshot. Alright. Now we're done. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.